thank you for staying with us. I hope you've been enjoying our discussions so far. Now, we're going to be looking at lifestyle and changes for a healthy living. What does that mean? Mm. Okay, they say you can make some changes to the things you do. Yes, for the instance, way you, live your life. you want to get fat. The, one of the adjustments you need to make is to eat more meat pie. Many people are not in that list. <laughs> more people are trying to lose weight. And to help me. When you want to lose weight, you... That they say, some people say eating is not what. You yeah, I do. told you before, he doesn't drink. Don't worry. <laughs> he's, he's normal. He's normal. He's normal. So, your lifestyle includes any choice or action that you make that influences your life, whether in a small way or in a big way. So, in some way. So, it will include the things you eat whether you exercise and a bear bear law as they say in Yoruba huh? and so on and uh, so forth. You just say ABBL, we will understand what you are saying. <laughs> ABBL, <laughs> please translate into English. At the bear bear law. Oh. <laughs> okay. So I mentioned one or two things, at the bear bear law. Mm. So the at the bear bear law will be added onto us by our guest this morning, who is a pharmacist and a lifestyle doctor. So is it Dr. Bukola Agumbiade? Yes, it's farm Dr. Bukola Agumbiade. Farm? No, it's not farm the one you go to. P-H-A-R-M, yes. Which I will desist from saying, <laughs> because as far as I'm concerned, there's no such title. Miss. <laughs> Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Bukola Agumbiade. Good morning. Good morning thank you to for joining you. Us. Good morning to you. So you thank you for to having me. Tell us how to improve our life. Yes, it's, it's very live, important. How to live better. Yes. I, I, I'm gonna, I, be, I, be healthy. Yeah, I'm going to be Hold it. your horses. Oh, sorry, have mercy. How to live a better life, how to be healthier from the choices we make. Abby? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Over to you. Mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. Let me begin by asking this one. Why is it difficult for people to make the changes they need to make? For instance, people are told, uh, if you want to lose weight, you have to stop eating this, stop eating that. Oh, you are a cancer survivor. Ah shouldn't be eating this, you shouldn't be going there. Why is it difficult to, to not do those things, to take those counsel? Um, I think uh, from my own years of experience, because I can say my experience is as old as I am, because I'm a second generation pharmacist. So I can tell you that I think in this part of the world, our value for life is very is very appalling. We don't really value living. Yes. Um, I don't understand. Um, yes. I'll essentially, are you saying people want to die? I think so. Yeah. Yes. As a medical person, I can tell you that sometimes the way people be behave, it seems as if they want to commit suicide. Or do they have a death wish? Yes, like they have a death wish. Like, for example, I have a client who has been who has had IBP for a while and we've been trying to fix it, trying to reverse it, only for me to check his status yesterday and he was taking alcohol. It was a fr and he told me, hey, it was a Friday, we were just trying to celebrate and I'm wondering, hello? <laughs> <laughs> and on my way here, he sent me his BP measurements, it was I. What if I didn't see his status? I would have been giving myself that edict that was happening. Is this drug not working? What is happening? So I think our value for life, we need to, we need to check it. Our value for life is really, is really low. What, hmm. what kind of experience? I've, I've, I've heard that said, but I don't think that people have uh, very little value for their own lives. They may have for other people's lives, but I don't know about them having for their own life. <laughs> What, what, what baffles me, while you both are, you know, spot on in that, but what makes it difficult 
I, I will imagine, for instance, that they don't want to die. That's why they would engage you, for instance. Yes. They, they want to do the right, right. things. Yeah. But doing it, desiring to matter. do it, yeah. is one thing. <laughs> Actually doing, doing it. it. Is that another, so another thing altogether? I'm very, very strict right for now. For me, for me, because I've also had near-death experiences personally. Oh, really? Yes, I've had. I've been a. I've been a victim of misdiagnosis by by my colleagues. And <laughs> Tell us about that. <laughs> okay, I think that was around 2018. I just had a baby and I was feeling very sick. I was always getting feverish just the slightest second i could just go feverish and within 10 seconds or so i'll be fine again i was going everywhere please check me what is happening they will tell me it's malaria oh fam you are not finishing your your dosage you know, we know ourselves after the first or second we don't complete it and all of that i kept calling everybody because i know that i cannot self-diagonize i kept calling everybody they kept telling me do malaria do typhoid treat this treat that they weren't getting to it until i visited a clinical pharmacist who immediately saw me that was overweight, he told me, oh, you have a death wish, go and die now. My husband was like, hello, <laughs> what kind of woman <laughs> being is this? I said, no, that I understand where it's coming from. Tell me what's wrong. So it just, it just means that you're overweight, so everything will be wrong with you. You have a death wish, so bye-bye. Uh, My husband was like, why did we come here? We traveled all the way to see this one. I said, don't worry, let's get to it. And I got to it. I changed everything. I changed everything. I started exercising, changed my diet. Changed, if I'm cooking, you think we are preparing for a buffet. <laughs> and I, I was able to calm down. And it was until I was able to reduce my weight that we were able to see what was eaten, which was his kidney stone. I had done several scans. But because I had liver fat and all of that, they could not really see. Hmm. So until I was able to lose about 12 kg, that means I had lost part of those fats, was when they were able to see what was actually wrong. The kidney stone was so big and it was locked somewhere very, very hidden in my kidney. I don't want to... 12 <laughs> kg is a lot of weight to lose. But when I knew my life was dependent on it, and I know that I'm not ready to die right okay. now, so I changed everything. Okay, we're talking about lifestyle changes. So tell us how it is possible to actually lose 12 kg. Okay, maybe not 12, okay. <laughs> to lose any. I think, uh, like the topic, uh, LD living, okay, lifestyle, lifestyle changes, changes for, healthy for healthy living. I think it's about habits. You have tiny drops of water make a mighty ocean. Mm -hmm. There are small, small little things that you were doing that added up to become where you got, uh, that got you to where you are. Mm -hmm. So it is the same habits that you would reverse. Okay. Eating bread, <clears throat> eating what? Well, we'll, all we'll your carbs get to all, all of that. that. <laughs> let, let, me, let me ask you this, because um, what you just said now, I mean, there are a number of people who perhaps have had the same misdiagnosis, misdiagnosis right now. Yeah. Um, but thankfully, you're also a pharmacist. It is natural. That when people say, ah, I want to lose weight, Instagram, how to lose <laughs> Why are you guys laughing? We Google clients. Yeah, but that is all we are dealing with right now. Why, why are you guys laughing? <laughs> They're watching you right now. They say, oh, you're making fun of them. So, are you saying we can't find it there? How to lose 12 kg in three months? They type it. Ah, oh. This uh, thing, keto, keto, <laughs> all kinds of things I've heard. Yeah. Is it that those things don't work or uh, people need to find certain, certain codes? In uh, that, that, that's, that's where the professional, professionals come in. It's not a one-size-fits-all okay. for everybody. In fact, depending on the particular face you are in your life, determines what exactly will work for you. So that's why Google cannot solve all your problems. If Google could solve all the problems, then you wouldn't be needing doctors or pharmacists again. That is where professionalism comes in. Like for example, a woman has like five faces in her life due to the hormonal journey and everything. So it's not something you use in your, in your premenopausal 
face is not the same thing you use at the menopause office. It's different. So that's why you still need to visit the professionals to give you a tailored uh -huh. treatment. And that's where we, we come in, giving personalized care. These people are very expensive. Okay. Um, <laughs> when I was opening, I spoke about lifestyle changes. And I mentioned just two items. Two items. Now, what are the other lifestyle changes that can be made okay, in um, one's life? Basically, lifestyle changes is sitting on four pillars. Hmm. But I've added another pillar. Because Making of five. <laughs> Making five. Okay. Because of uh, our, our situation okay. in our country. Okay, so the four pillars are the first one, eat more, drink more. Eat more, we are saying eat more of the right things, balanced diet and all of that. <laughs> eat more of the right things, okay. balanced diet and all of that. Drink more water. Most adults, I can tell you, 95% of adults are dehydrated. Because over the years, the task center in the brain has reduced. Please, work. Don't, don't forget the other things, but... Mm -hmm. Okay. 90% of our body is mm -hmm. water. Is water, yeah. So, you want me to overpopulate, to, what, to flood <laughs> my body? <laughs> no, you water. lose part of that 90% over the course of the day. Your saliva is produced from water. Your, eye, your eyeballs are lubricated from water. So you lose some of it as the day goes by, as you go on on your activities. So to replenish, you should at least take between three to four liters of water, depending on your activity, mm -hmm. depending on the temperature, the climate, temperature and all of that. that three so liters, am I a fish? <laughs> <laughs> You are from Niger Delta. You should be able to drink even five liters. Between yeah. three to four liters every day. You should be. You are from Niger Delta. Okay, eat more, drink more. <laughs> <laughs> so eat more, drink more. That's the first one. Mm -hmm. The second one is sleep more. Sleep more. Yes. Um, madam, mm -hmm. you know one of the, the things that one. wait. <laughs> one of the things that um. Um, business people tell us, or is it leadership? I don't even oh, know all those motivational all speakers. Aspire to respire. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> aspire to perspire. To expire. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, that the biggest names in the world, they don't, they don't sleep eight hours. They don't sleep in hours. Asia. <laughs> <laughs> this is they, they, they call for president June. elect works better in the night. Yes. So he probably has about two hours sleep every night. You know, so uh, the biggest names, the Warren Buffett, the Dangotes, mm, the Femme they, they don't sleep. <laughs> so if you want That's to be rich, that's why they make money. If you want, you want to be rich, rich you stay don't awake sleep all in night. The night. So that's even a, if you are doing nothing, that's stay a, awake. That's, that's a lie from the pit of hell. Because the truth is, yes, amyloid fluid is produced by the brain. When you sleep, that is when this fluid is produced. No, that is when it's produced by the brain normally. Okay. So when you sleep, it's like a toxin in the brain that is produced when it's active. So it is when you sleep that it can flush out this toxin. So when you are not sleeping, you are slowing down your neurogenesis, you are slowing down your brain plasticity, you are slowing down the, <laughs> the process by which this fluid is being flushed. You are, you are setting up yourself for a doom. In fact, you are a ticky bump if you don't sleep. Like for example, in 2020 during the coronavirus, someone called me, she's a cousin to one of the governors then, and she called me, hey, she's one of my clients. Uh, my uncle, you know, he's infected. Uh, what can you do? And all that. I said, I'm sorry. I don't think your uncle can survive. She said, why? I said, he has been a politician almost all his life. So that means he has not been sleeping for a really long time. So, and the, one of the major determinants is the is the brain in so any healing process get mm. your uncle to sleep more it's already too late because the damage has been done over the years oh dear so if you okay don't number sleep. three number no, that's three number three no 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 eat more sleep eat, uh, more, eat more eat more drink, drink more, more sleep more, more. is one mm -hmm. okay. sleep, sleep more, more is two, two. Oh, okay three love more love love more <laughs> <laughs> love <Okay>. more love <laughs> Oh, my darling, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> then the first, yes, uh, the first one more. is move more. Mo okay, exercise again. Uh, okay, and then the number five that you added. That I had it. I'm not checkup, at least. I'm not okay. medical checkup, at the very least. I'm not check. 
Okay. So you now start explaining the one after the other. <laughs> Eat more, drink more. Um, people in the village don't have problem eating because they can just go by this beside the house and block and block something. Block something, put them together. I still remember this story with with excitement. My cousins and I we left the the village and went to the farm on our way we walked jesus we walked it's like walking from here to togate and we were you it, it's in the village it's in the bush so you wouldn't even you know wouldn't how long it, you yeah. were walking so we were wow. walking walking we we'll get to this place we plucked um, pepper, we got to this place, vegetables, we got to that place, we saw the palm kernel, and then we even got to one place, we saw yam that has been abandoned. The thing is, was big. Big. We rooted it. We, on our way, we saw one We can rat. see the way you're calling it that you like food. On our way, we <laughs> saw one um, animal. Animal. <laughs> 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 Bush meat. We can go. <laughs> so when we got to the farm settlement, we prepared everything. I still remember it is still the best pounded yam I've ever eaten wow. all my life. But in that is the village. In the city. <laughs> <laughs> Those things don't happen. So when you say eat more, please help us understand because to eat more I can just jump in the next available restaurant no. or a fast food joint and all I those eat chicken and chips and eat whatever you know. it's a, it's a, uh, eat more is actually a double edged sword is eat more of the right things and less of the wrong things what are the wrong things the processed food anything processed is not good for you ah. so my sweet corn is um I'm sorry. Go and buy normal corn. <laughs> Anything processed okay. is, is highly. <laughs> you have very high sodium. You have the removing of the, the fiber um, and lots of things. What's which, it called? The preservatives, right? Yes. Oh, okay. So you have a lot of those, so which are not good for your system. So eat more of the right things. Um, like I said, it's about cultivating habits, the good habits that would really change the lifestyle. So when you want to eat, it's not just about serving yourself. You should have portion control. You can be using plates that are portioned. The tennis ball. Again. The tennis ball. <laughs> so you are saying we should not be more than this. Uh, yes, for your carbohydrates. You swallow. And so then take, I eat plenty take, vegetable. Yes. Ah, so you know, you don't know what already you know. <laughs> plenty vegetable. <laughs> Plenty of protein, a little bit of fat and oil, then carbohydrate reduce it. If you are not really doing all these much. things you told they told us in form three. Health science. <laughs> <laughs> but it is doing these things that's the issue. Um you, you also spoke to it the other time, perhaps, you know, in a you know on the side that look, people may not even be able to afford some of these things. In fact, the definition of food for many people is eat to fill your tummy. Okay. Full stop. Anything other than that is extra. Mm -hmm. I, I don't really think affording it is, is really an issue. Because I can tell you that um, from my own experience, the people who have had metabolic illnesses are the middle class and the well to do. Okay. The poor Those people who don't really afford it. Yes, the people who can afford it <coughs> are the ones who are not getting the right things. Is that going to be ready? Ma? Can you please tell me how the wrong things are the ones that taste very good? <laughs> <laughs> because they are processed. So they are processed to, to, be to trick your brain and to tr trick your palates. Ah. The pa and now that's the only way. If I'm a manufacturer, if I'm going into, if I'm going into processing this, I'm just preserving something natural, what will make you come back? to me. I must give you an experience that you won't forget. So what part of that experience is, is, the, is in the tweaking it. I'm talking about processed food. For instance, I am Isha and I love pounded yam. Then you say I should eat pounded yam that is this size. <laughs> what? That is just my appetizer. A punishment. It's punishment. <laughs> No, no. See, that, I'm that's, pounded yam that, and vegetable that's, that's soup. One of, that's ah. one of the things I work on when I'm speaking to people, I'm counseling people. 
during our health coaching classes because uh, we need to change the perspective. Mm -hmm. We grew up with seeing our forefathers eat that much quantity, the big sizes. And especially the meat. No, oh. there's no issue even if you are taking a lot of meat oh, really? in, in some way, yes, at a particular phase of your life. Mm -hmm. There's no problem if you are taking a lot so of meat. So you can hear I can eat meat as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not it's... saying you because ah. I'm not even... <laughs> I'm not counseling you. I'm just one, saying it depends one on the face. Can Please. eat. I don't want to yes. hear what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> we grew up seeing them eating these big buluses. Big portions. Yes. Big portions. But it's because, like you said, it's in the village. They will burn it out. Yeah. Because one thing I tell people, what you don't burn, the food you don't burn will burn you. Mm. Mm. So no problem. If you want to enjoy your pounded yam, enjoy it in that very big bolos but when you are done please eat the gym or go and start throwing <laughs> down the stairs no problem i don't have any problem with it because the truth is it's called carbohydrates is energy giving food we we're told all of these things in our days of integrated science so the question i ask myself before i take any meal is am i is energy giving food what do, do I, I need, need energy what for? do i need this energy for at this present time oh. if i'm staying at home if i'm working from home I don't have a business eating like somebody who is going to go through like five hours going traffic or four, from, four buses from, to get uh, to the office. Uh, Abuja. Exactly. Mm. If, I, if I don't need that much energy, today is for rest. If today is for rest, then I should take more fruits, hmm. more vegetables. But familiar. if tomorrow I'm going to be very busy, then no problem. You can eat it today, know you'll burn it tomorrow. And that tomorrow when you are busy, you are, you are just taking water or fruits. Then you become deficit All and you become into balance out. It's discipline. It's just discipline. Yeah. Easy for you to say. How about the drink part? Uh, you know that <laughs> when we say drink. <coughs> mm. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> you need a drink. Yes, I need a drink. Yeah. <laughs> I need a drink. You know? Uh, is it peculiar to, the wrong where, drink. to your location? To where you live? Because when you say drink, I could drink chap woman. Or chap man, or chap uncle. I can't no. chap anything. Drink more water more. and water infused fruits. Mm -hmm. Take teas, about teas. Uh, hey, that is what I mean. Oh. I was. I'm not even interested in all the fizzy drinks, all the Wait, beverages. I don't want you to be. I'm not, is interested. Mm, I don't want you to be interested. Oh. <laughs> Just see them and pass. <laughs> And if you take them, take them. In fact, I don't even advise people so to take them. So if I want them, to eat the kind of pounded yam Alero is talking about, <laughs> and I, you, you don't want me to use something to wash it down. Why would you Water. take carbohydrates and take sugar? Everything is going back to become glucose oh at the end of the day. Why are you complicating <laughs> no, but, but, but when we're young, that's the kind of thing that we eat. We eat... Pounded yam, then we wash it down with a bottle of uh, wash it down. Sometimes you know it has to be washed. Uh, when you were Something young, that like you said, we when used to you buy were for young, ten, ten cupboard at that time. When you were young mm. and you burn it off, mm. but now you've been in, you've been in the studio for like two or three hours. You've not been on your feet, so anything no, in your system. Feet. Please, please, the <laughs> fact that. The, the, those be, don't believe I, I've been on my feet. Ah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> so you 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 can't burn it off. Talking you really can't. Two hours on his feet. Okay. Yes. On his seat. Okay, on his feet. Okay, no problem. But you can't burn it off. That's this the problem. So don't don't load your system. So essentially, you're saying you don't you don't uh, need. Then, then you spoke about sleep more. Yes. Mm -hmm. How many hours? Is mm -hmm. You see that sleep good. there. Mm. It's not just about sleeping. Some people will tell you, yes, I've had eight hours sleep, I'm not rested. It's not just about sleeping. Because sleep is like the stock market. You can't just invest anytime you feel like it. You must invest at the right time. So you must go to bed by 10. Try and go to bed by 10. Because the body has a rhythm on its own. Madam. Before the days wait, of clock wait and first, everything. Wait first. Yeah. Somebody is living in Mowi. Okay. This is our traffic for now. Yes. <laughs> Between Mowe and Togate, you know, and um, Berger, Berger, at least three hours. Three hours, yes. Woke up around 3 a.m., left home 3.30.
get to the office 10 a.m. In VI. <laughs> VI. On the way back, goes through the same traffic. Left the office around 6, 6 p.m. Get home around midnight, please. Is this the 10 p.m. should start in the bus? In the, <laughs> if you can start in the bus, make do of all you have. With, make do with what you have. Nap in the afternoon. Have a nap sleep in the bus. In the bus. There's no problem. Because, I'm, like, I'm, I was I'm trying, trying to, I was going yeah. to get there that one important risk factor for your lifestyle is your job. Mm. And that is something a lot of our doctors don't take into consideration. consideration is your job. Your job is a major determining factor. Of your lifestyle. Of your, your health. And your health, yes. Mm -hmm. Of your lifestyle and your health. Like, for example, um, I was speaking to a nail technician during the corona time. She was having long difficulties, difficulties breathing. She couldn't taste. But she couldn't tell anybody because she was afraid that they would just label her as, ah, she's, <laughs> she's already infected with corona. So, but thank God, she has a client who knows me. So when she was able to voice out eventually, that was like, oh, no, don't worry. I have a doctor that will treat you specially. That is not a, don't, don't conclude this corona yet. So when I met her, I told, oh, you're a te nail technician. You make use of all of these chemicals. Chemicals, are your chemicals. Yeah. Even the dust from the nails and everything, yes. they affect your lungs. So these are the things we need to treat wow. first. And I had to tell her, coach her on what to do. She should be using no marks, industrial no marks and everything. That is her job. The way I will treat her is different from the way I will treat a bricklayer who is also exposed to cement dust and all of that. It's different from the way I will treat a smoker who mm -hmm. is self-inflicted. <laughs> 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 they are different. So another important risk factor in your lifestyle is your job. You need to understand, you need to go for occupational therapy to understand the risk factors attached to the kind of job that you do. And how to adapt and it how to your to adapt lifestyle. To, yes. Because this thing yes, <coughs> excuse me, saying about sleeping more, it really is something every many people know. You spoke about politicians, for instance, and they are quite prominent now. And as so many other people, young people, are going to want to get into politics. What would you recommend? I would recommend deep breathing. For them? Deep breathing, yes. They can have, there's, we have a little spirometer that you can carry along with you, that you can do this during the day. Deep breathing, because when you drip, when you breathe deeply. deeply it helps even when you are not sleeping as such your body is still getting the required oxygen mm. not just the rest okay. as such practicing yoga then sleep anytime they can you don't need to if it's in the car sleep if it's sleep as much as you can but deep breathing and yoga is very very important it's not like sleep everywhere huh? <laughs> the person gets at an event. No, not not at an event. Not at an event. <laughs> okay. Okay. I would also saying. penalize them for sleeping at the plenary <laughs> okay. session. How many hours of sleep a day is good? Is healthy? Eight hours for an adult. For an, eight hours for an adult. Yes. And there was silence in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> eight hours. Yes. Okay. Uh, how about the little kids? All right. Uh, they can have as much as ten. 12, because they need it more because they are, they are growing. Okay. So Why must okay. it be eight hours for an um, adult? Because there's a rhythm, like I said. Okay. There's a rhythm. There's nature. It's already, it's already programmed. So there's a rhythm. You need to get to the REM stage yes. before you get to the REM stage. Before it's, it's, There's a rhythm. And if you don't? And if you don't, of course. It, uh, <laughs> if you don't, you are going to activate your adrenal glands. They are going to activate your stress hormone, which is the cortisol, and that's opening up yourself for a lot of things. Is it possible for you to sleep and not attain REM? Yes, it's possible. Nights in a row? Yes, it's possible. It's possible. Okay. It's possible. Okay. Why? And that is the one that's really restful, isn't it? Yes. You need to get to REM, otherwise you're not really rested. No, let, help people understand the difference between sleep and rest, because some people mistake it. Oh, okay. There is, I have heard the term restive sleep. So 
people don't ah ah you have not been rested ah but i'm sleeping now no no <laughs> you can't you can't be sleeping by just closing your eyes and you're very conscious especially our mothers when you're talking to some mothers they will be like in fact it has become a badge of honor when a woman says ah if a cockroach should pass, I know where I'll be like, do you think this is, <laughs> <laughs> is anybody going to give you an award for this? I think it's like a normal thing. Uh, how good is your sleep, madam? Um, I sleep. But if cockroach should pass, I know where it has passed. I'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> what kind of sleep what kind is of that? Sleep is this? You need to sleep deeply. But as women, sometimes, especially depending on um the menstrual cycle and all of that but by the time you understand yourself and you practice deep breathing before sleeping you'll be able to get to the hurry him you give us a little demonstration of that deep deep sleeping and here is why right. there are a number of people watching us from different parts of the world right now who have to have three jobs four jobs just to be able to what's the word you used earlier meet up meet up <laughs> you know so <laughs> what 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 help us because they also are in this it's one world they also are in the same space as everybody else so beyond the people who are in nigeria who are in parts of africa wherever you are in the world what is it that is essential for them to do i mean help us understand when you say deep breathing if can you give us a demonstration okay deep breathing basically is just about uh filling up your lungs you breathe through your nose you fill up your lungs as much as you can. You hold it in. You hold it in for a while, for as long as you can. Then you breathe out through your mouth. I've, I've seen some um, things that some people circulate on. There are, there are apps for it. There are, there's a small equipment that you can use, which is a spirometer which as as you go on it shows the level at which spiro, <laughs> spiro meter yes <laughs> s-p-i-r-o meter yeah okay so it shows it shows the level of as as you go on using it it's you see that your lung capacity is changing mm. is increasing okay and you swim yes swimming is also something that can increase your lung capacity mm. when you swim a lot it increases your lung capacity so by the time you are breathing, even unconsciously, the lung capacity is a lot, so you can take in more hair, and of course your organs will get more oxygen. How okay. does? Okay. Let, let's move on, because we still have three items to look at. Love more. Love more, mm. yeah. Um, we've, I think we are getting to a level in the world where uh, we are becoming socially, I mean, we are isolating ourselves socially socially disconnected yes yeah, socially disconnected in fact <laughs> you go out with your friends you guys want to hang out and you're all on your phone 70 <laughs> of the time everyone just type in yeah it's so it's so it's so it's so it's so annoying it's so it's, it's funny anyway but um speaking to other people Again, for example increases oxytocin speaking to other people having positive relationships are things that we underestimate because when you are in maybe you've experienced an heartbreak or lost a loved one or in an abusive relationship your body tends to produce more adrenaline which is a flight mode so when your body is producing adrenaline you do not expect your body to be digesting at that time you do not expect it to be going through any growth process or the normal metabolic processes at that time because you are in a flight mode that means flight or fight you are ready to fight or you are ready to fly so the body shuts down some functions mm. at that time so which increases your stress hormone the cortisol it decreases your metabolic functions a lot of things up until gi disturbance mm. your so digestive system so slow down. essentially you're saying hating on someone um is injurious to lifestyle i mean that you hate someone or you're angry with yes, somebody yes oh <laughs> you are doing yourself a whole lot of harm <laughs> just to just have a positive outlook <laughs> build, um, only allow positive energies around you have healthy relationships these things are so easy to say yeah. but help us understand because you know we're talking about lifestyle changes here right 
Many people don't even know that these things have such far-reaching effects. They do. We've seen that people who have gone through who have gone through divorce or have lost some loved one along the way in their life are more prom they are they they are more probable to be uh, they have more incidences of cancer than oh. people who have had say that again please so those who have who have, who have lost a loved one mm -hmm. or you, you know some troublesome people or, or, or traumatic experiences or traumatic experiences <coughs> they are more likely to have cancer more prone to cancer yes so being envious being hateful <laughs> being no it depends angry. some people some people are envious they are hateful by just comments some people will not even speak it out they just have it bottled up that's another thing i know people who who if you check their bp they are fine and you can say they are troublesome by just picking up for themselves once they've expressed themselves that's all oh, okay so that could no that might not be a problem but there are people who are not happy and they bottle it up and they process and they all of these things you just need to remember when you're angry and all of that that hmm, adrenaline factory has opened <laughs> and when you remember that you just shut it down <laughs> <laughs> so it is one thing to be displeased and bottle it up. Yeah. It's another thing to be displeased and voice it. And voice it out. Now, how about those who are displeased, voice it out, and still keep it in? <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. That I would advise them to stop because they should always remember that your adrenaline factory has just started work. Once you have anything troubling you, that's the way, that's the way God has made us so that we can survive. So that when we see stressful situations, when the adrenaline starts production, we know we are supposed to flee that situation. Oh. So, but if the fleeing is now within your system, then flee it from within. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the fifth one is... Um, move more. Move more. Look, exercise. The fourth Definitely. one is move more. The fourth more. one is move more. Move more. Yes. We've, we've had a fitness person here. Who, yes, I think I watched that episode. Oh, okay. Yeah. Who told us, look, you can do this even in your office, at home, wherever. Mm -hmm. Just make sure that you're your joints are always moving, moving yeah. and, and the rest of that. Thank you. We know you do it. Do you, have to <laughs> <laughs> you know, who, who... I feel uh, the need to move. I've been sitting down for almost three hours. Well, then yeah. another thing to move in more is also in this era of working from home, it's very important that you expose yourself to the morning sunlight for vitamin D production. Okay. Because working from home, we've seen that most people that are working from home are likely to, apart from being lonely, because vitamin D is not being produced, and uh, there's also the reuptake of serotonin and some neurotransmitters is not, is not going into the normal completion. They are more likely to have depression, anxiety, and all oh. of that. So part of Move More is also try and expose yourself to the morning sunlight because vitamin D is very important for your mental health. If the in sun fact, doesn't come out, can um, I go and do fireworks? The, <laughs> no, the, no, no, no. The no. Fi Where's that fire? No. Your, body, your, your, body, your body knows when the sun is not coming out. That is it. Your body knows when the sun is not in coming fact, out. In um, fact, it could be an old wife's tale. I don't know. I had a fracture in my shoulder once. I fell and fractured my shoulder. And an old lady said to me, you must get out into the early morning sun between 9.30 and 11. Yes, it's not an old. Get out and make sure that you get the yes, sun. Yes, because vitamin D is prerequisite. Shoulder. It'll help it heal faster. Vitamin D is a prerequisite to the, to the absorption of calcium in the system. So it's not an old wife's tale. So it's not, it's not an old wife's so tale. So if I go out at 3 o'clock, Uncle? It's not the same. You were born. <laughs> ah, that sun doesn't help. But that sun doesn't help as much. Oh. Yeah. That one is vitamin. It's a specific. Yes. yes. But right. most people who mm. go to car, to the office in an air-conditioned car, mm. come back in an air-conditioned mm. car, Entire work in an air-conditioned mm. office, eat in mm. an air-conditioned restaurant mm. and all those things, how do we get vitamin D? It's a conscious thing. Try and hold one of your meetings outside. <laughs> in the sun. In the sun. <laughs> Maybe you need to speak to a colleague in the office. Just say, let's step out. Are you serious? Yes. See, the thing is, uh, well, uh, the reason why I said it's about habits. 
look at if you look at the Koreans, if you watch their film, you see that they are they are enlightened. They know all of these things. You will see that some of their offices uh, they might have a boardroom that is in an open environment or a courtyard kind of arrangement, mm -hmm. such that they are exposed to direct sunlight. Okay, is that also why some mm -hmm. offices have glass all around? Um, glass will reduce, oh, okay. reduce the penetration. Of, so of. it's not, I, I think the, that one is just aesthetic. It's just aesthetic. But if, if you are enlightened, you will know that. <laughs> you know that. So take one of your meetings in the sun or maybe just have a brief meeting in the sun. Not have to, though you are supposed to use um, SPF protection on your skin so that you don't also expose yourself to ultraviolet, ultraviolet but trees. You all say that. that that early morning sun doesn't sun. have much. Uh, yes, it doesn't have. Doesn't, doesn't have, have much, much ultraviolet rays. Ultraviolet rays. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So we hear. Now um, that we have gone through your list. No, we've not gone through the last no. one. The last okay. one is check up. Yeah, check, up. check up. Yes. That is that is a major thing for this part of the world, because we don't even we don't have that habit. Mm -hmm. We don't have that doctor or hospital visiting habit. Before we... a doctor will see a patient, be sure that that patient has gone through the patent medicine shop to the pharmacy shop before coming to see a doctor. And hmm. perhaps also gone to see Alagbu. Alagbu, yeah. Um, in increasing the chain of command. <laughs> okay. But then, talking about this checkup of a thing, many hear of it. Many think about it, but the number one thing that comes to mind is it's too costly. Uh, expensive is relative. Expensive is relative. The basic checks that I know of are not, doesn't work, it's not more than 30,000. The, the basic things that are important that for are very health. very important and it's just yes. once in a year and it's just once in a year mm -hmm. so 30k for once in a year even if you are saving 2,000 every month I think or 3,000 yeah. every month you should be able to do that because the thing is the same people are saying these medical checkups are expensive first of all I'll tell you a stitching time so saves nine mm -hmm. and you are servicing your generator an average Nigerian has a better pass my neighbor in his house. And whether you like it or not, you spend up to 3000 every month to fix that gen. You have a car, you spend more than that to fix your car. But the most important machine that you have, which is your body, yourself, you are not saving up towards it. So I think it's expensive, it's relative. Okay. Um, help us understand. There are, you know, one of the things that, that came to my mind to ask you is about parenting. Um, Parents go to work in the morning, come back very late, and the children, you know, literally have to be at the mercy of... Uh, and I'm pretty sure that that's also one of the, the lifestyle changes that are important for the future of both the children and the parents as well. What are the things that you have seen and that you think that you might want to propose one or two adjustments in our lifestyle so that we build for the future? Um, okay, like, for example, I noticed... From my, from my experience, that um, our kitchen is becoming a war zone, or what would I call it? It's becoming, our kitchens are becoming poison centers. Yes. Also. Because most mothers, because they are too busy, are now feeding their kids with processed foods. And in fact, being overweight, Children that are overweight have become the <laughs> have become a status thing. Welfare children. Welfare. <laughs> <laughs> and that is that is very sad because you are predisposing these children for a lifelong doom. Wow. An overweight child, I can assure you, has 80% chance of being diabetic or having cardiovascular diseases towards as, as they grow as older. It grows older. older. So I, it's, it starts from home. I understand we are getting to that age that we are becoming very busy. But I think it's not even in being busy. I think is we have the wrong 
interpretation of things because I'm also really busy. But for example, for my last child, because I had him when I had to go through that lifestyle changes myself. So he grew up seeing all of us taking fruits, lots of fruits at home. In fact, I don't buy biscuits, I don't buy sweets in my house. We don't buy cereal. We take lots of fruits, take gari and granite if you have to snack or something. But we don't, we take more fruits Very and smoothie. vegetables and all of that. <laughs> we take more of fruits and vegetables. If you give my last child a pack of biscuits and watermelon, he will collect watermelon from you. Not minding even if that biscuit is Danish cookies or shortbread or whatever, because that is what he's used to. If we are traveling, we take, we eat garden egg, take plantain chips that are not processed and all of that. I think it's about the options, but sometimes we, it has become a status thing. That you take your kids to the church and you want to flaunt and you have to give them cap prison and give them, as in, it, I, I get irritated when I see it, like, what are you for me for? Don't worry, <laughs> now your child is coming to be my patient very soon. <laughs> God, God, God help us all. So I think it's just about the options. We need to give the, the, better options. People, when people get really desperate, um, they they just want, they just hear about the treatment that someone went through, and they want to go for it. For instance, I've been hearing about stem cell this, um, all kinds of things. Mm. To me, it sounds to me very, very. What's the word now? Aesthetic. I um, was that someone has accused me of being bombless. I'm happy. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Can be looking at your phone for now. Mm -hmm. But you know, so what are the risks people need to factor in before taking on any of these aesthetic mm. um, uh, treatments, treatments, all in the name of the Beauty. one their lives to be better? Uh, which will definitely alter their lifestyles? Oh, I think um, <laughs> I understand where, where you are coming from. The bomb and all of that, the, all, the, like all that. the enlargement and all of that. Of course, the people going, if you are going through any aesthetic treatments, you know definitely that you've pre, you have exposed yourself to any side effect that comes with it. But I would advise that if you have to, if you are convinced that you have to go through any aesthetic treatments, make sure you do it with a professional. Because you don't... You Why don't, is it necessary? I'm just asking. I think it's a, it's a personal thing. It's a, I'm a lifestyle doctor. And I've seen people who I know, if they, if they look better, their mental health will be better. Oh, so really? we need to weigh, yes. So we weigh the risk and the benefits. So if the benefit outweighs the risk, of course we we'll advise them to go for it. Yes. They look better. Yes, they will Who feel better. They don't look good. I'm sorry, they grew up like that. That is what they think. That is what they know. You really can't do much. And we, that's why I, that, that's one of the reasons why I decided to go into lifestyle medicine. Because I understand that there are some things you, you discuss with a regular doctor that he does not understand. You discuss with a regular pharmacist, they don't understand. But in understanding people's lifestyle, you understand what they have to deal with. Like, I treat a lot of celebrities and, and lots of that. So, for example, I'm treating a celebrity and she has to change her figure to suit into the uh, perception, <laughs> perception mm -hmm. that she's building. Mm. Being a lifestyle doctor, I would make sure she gets it from the best, but we would also tweak her lifestyle to suit what she has gone through or what she's so that, about to go through so that, so that we can reduce the effects, the, minima, the risk minimally. And you, you can't question people's choices. That's Me, the truth. Question, no. Yes. <laughs> I think we are done here this morning. Mm. Because this one that you are starting is under mm. fire altogether. Mrs. Bukhala Gumbiade, pharmacist, lifestyle doctor. Um, you raised a lot of things. Mm. <laughs> Drink three, four liters of water a day. You know, sleep It's easy. Just start with one liter in the morning. Start with one liter in the morning.
Okay. Immediately you get up from your bed, take one liter. Then as you go by the day, it's just like one liter of water as soon as you wake just up. Two, just, just two sachets of pure water. Just two. It's okay. Oh, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very I much. I try to drink coming. water in the morning. By the time I'm way, I'm halfway through the bottle, I'm bloated. I'm halfway through the glass. <laughs> you, you take it gradually, gradually, or you warm up the water. Thank okay. you very much for coming this morning and uh, closing our program for us today. Thank you for having the me. 20th of May 2023. Which means we're just nine way, nine days away from the inauguration of our new government. And seven days away from Children's Day. Says the child. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Mommy. Thank you very much for being with us today. And uh, we hope that we will see you again or be with you again next week with a fresh edition of Sunrise. I am Alero Edu, wishing you a very happy weekend indeed and a blessed week ahead of you. I'm Ayo Makinde. Please pray for Nigeria. She needs you now as you do need her. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And put Nigeria first, always. Bye for now.